Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my Beginner's Guide to Abyss 103. Floor 103 will have you squaring off against Blaze Dingo as well as Masked Gentleman Sid. Blaze Dingo, as a character, has heals for him and Sid. He cleanses debuffs on both of them, and Sid can also transfer some of the debuffs he has back to your own team. Blaze Dingo also restricts the amount of souls that your team gets, so you won't be able to use soul burns or your guardian like Arky efficiently, so keep that in mind. And he stays as Blaze Dingo until he gets his ultimate, which is Sacred Power, at which point he will turn into Red Dingo, and Masked Gentleman Sid here will turn into the base version of Sid. As soon as Blaze Dingo turns into regular Dingo, he gains two turn immunity, two turn attack buff, and one turn of invincibility. That must get stripped. You must have a dedicated character that can remove that at all costs. If you aren't able to remove that, it's going to cause big problems because whenever Red Dingo takes a turn, if he doesn't have at least two debuffs on him, he will use Quick Grow, which is an AoE attack that stuns your entire team and does massive damage. And it gets stronger every single time he uses it. So by like the third or fourth Quick Grow, your whole team is dead. You're just not going to be able to survive it. Now, in order to minimize the damage on Quick Grow, he needs to have, again, two or more debuffs on him. But... You can't exceed six or more debuffs because if you do, then he turns back into Blaze Dingo. You lose all of your souls and then you have to deal with the healing version of Dingo. So the mechanic of the fight is essentially keep Blaze Dingo, or I should say in this case, Red Dingo, between two to five debuffs at all times. Which debuffs you decide to go with, I leave that to you. The most obvious debuff that is stackable, spammable, is going to be poison, and that is going to be the strategy that we're going to be using in this video, and I'll explain why that is in just a minute. But accompanying Blaze Dingo on the first floor are seven mice, the three mighty guardians, as well as four mighty scouts. Now, you need to bring a dedicated character or two just to deal with the very first floor, because if you don't, you're not even going to be able to pass that first floor. The first floor does not end when you kill the boss. It ends when you kill all enemies that are on the actual floor. Now, how this fight works is when you use an exclusively single target attack on any of the mice, and I say exclusively because characters like Mercedes with her Divine Bolt that hits two targets, or like Arbiter Vildred, Spectre Teneria, these characters that hit two characters do not trigger this. But if you use an exclusively single target attack, it pushes every other mouse on the floor by 50 combat percent if you kill a mouse it gives one charge turn to the ultimate of all other mice and each mouse has an ultimate that revives a fallen mouse which means if you don't kill them all via aoe you just can't get off the floor it just becomes a game of whack-a-mole you just kill one another pops up so on and so forth so you have to have a strong dedicated primarily aoe damage dealer in order to get off this floor oh also you can't use souls because for some reason the mice just restrict your souls you just aren't gonna be able to use arky or any of that blaze dingo also same deal he restricts your souls so you're just not gonna have souls for like 75 percent of this entire fight but let's talk about what every team needs in order for you to succeed here on this abyss floor right number one aoe damage dealer for the mice just can't get off of the floor otherwise some character with a way to remove all of the buffs off of blaze dingo when he turns into dingo otherwise you die to quick grow some kind of healer to sustain you and then some kind of debuff right somebody that is multifaceted with debuffs now for an easy fight poison is the obvious choice there's only really two characters you could choose here is which is what i'm using here in this video or Spectre Tenebria, who is a Moonlight 5-star that some of you may have access to. If you want the easiest possible fight, just build one of these characters. I promise you, you are not going to like the alternatives just because you don't want to use Kyrus. I promise you, it will be significantly easier to level Kyrus to 50, put gear on her, skill and catalyst her, get her to 5-star Woken, than having the other characters that you need for this floor. So the other options you can play are things like Red Tenebria in the slot for your debuffer, but she's going to probably need a Sierra Ren at plus 30. Otherwise, you're going to run into consistency issues. You're going to need maybe potentially an AoE DPS like Charlotte, who has 
attack buff on her uh, attack down on her S1, right? To replace Mercedes in tandem with maybe Red Tenebria. You might need a limited character like Cerise because she has restrict in her kit to stop the mice as well as has, you know, one or two unique debuffs. Peyra could also work because she has restrict to deal with the mice and has one or two unique debuffs. Basically, anything that is not playing Curious is a specific five star, which is beyond the scope of this beginner guide series. So I'm going with Curious because if you choose not to go with Curious, you need a restrict on your team. You need to play either burns or bleeds, attack downs, and you also most likely might need to play two soul weavers because you're going to be doing the fight fairly and not skipping some of Red Dingo's mechanics that I didn't discuss. Like where he just cleanses all the debuffs on him, hits you with a bunch of unhealables and a slew of debuffs. So you're going to need a, another dedicated cleanser that is probably, you know, more suited to the task than Tamarind. So if you want to play a team that requires specific five stars, look elsewhere. If you want the easiest possible team, it's the one that's sitting on your screen, which is going to be Flurry, Tamarind, Mercedes, Kyrus. Let's take a look now at their actual gear. So we have Falcon or Clear on Speed Boots, Health Ring, Health Necklace, Sword of Azera because I find that the AoE damage from Quick Grill and things like that, it's just too much for Arya. She'll just absorb it all and end up dying. Affect this ideally at over 60%. Have your Clurry attack maxed out if all possible. You need that maximum debuff chance. And then obviously if you get her skill tree awoken, that would be great. Tamarin is going to be our dedicated healer. You may need to, depending on what you're using, use like Angelic Montmorency instead of Clurry. But you need 60% effectus so that that way when she's in idle mode, you have a backup plan here with an AoE strip on Serene Tune. Speed on the boots, health on the ring, health on the necklace, and then to help with all of Dingo's debuffs, Wondrous Potion Vial. Mercedes, we just want her to hit as hard as possible. So she's just on the hardest hitting damage gear that I have from the 6th anniversary dash pass event. If you don't have this, use whatever hunt gear you have or your adventurer's path gear. Magic for friends here. Bonus if you can get 60% effectiveness to help with that strip phase when Blaze Dingo turns into Dingo. And then finally, Kyrus. Right? Kyrus just needs to be as fast as you can get her with decent bulk at 60% effectiveness or higher. Artifact needs to be something that gives hit chance. Oath Key is a three-star example of this. Anything that gives hit chance, because Dingo is red, Kyrus is green. You want that extra hit chance so that it's not just a coin flip. You want it to be like a two-thirds chance that you land poison, as opposed to only having a 50-50 shot. So that is why we're on that. If you decide to play Spectre, who is way easier, you could literally just play, again, same thing, as fast as possible, decent bulk, as much effectiveness as you could get. Crimson Moon of Nightmares, Sierra Ren, hell, even Abyssal Crown. Literally any of that is fine on the character, right? Again, Poison is the easiest way to do this. I'm going to keep stressing it here in the introduction because I know that there's always going to be one or two people in the comments saying, cool, now do it without Kyrus. Why? Why do it without Kyrus when she's freely available to everybody and is by far the easiest investment? To say not, to not use Kyrus is basically to tell my audience that they need a specific Moonlight 5-star to clear it. I'm not going to do that, so hopefully you understand. With that out of the way, let's get into the actual fight so you can see how it's done. I'm a bit sleepy, but I can fight. Alright, so at the start here, we can just I'll poison the Mighty this. Scout. I'm ready. <laughs> Close your eyes. Go. S2. We don't want to push anything. Defense break. The other scout. I will release my power. Delta three. Unveil your eye of terror. I'm a bit sleepy. S2. But we don't push any more of them. I. I think I'm going to faint. Magic for friends. Obey me. Obey me. I hope this job is a little easier. I'm ready. Command me. We can 
could use skill two here, and that should Obey clean me. up the whole rest of the floor. Obey me. I'm a bit sleepy. But now we start the poison combo up here. And Dingo. Heal up here. With Tamarin. Fight a little harder, Flurry. Alright. And hit Sid. Call. Mercedes. Preparation complete. I'm a bit sleepy. Then the duration on this poison. You can't close your eyes. Did again. Got it, Flurry. Just like we practiced. Command me. Beyond the abyss to the end of futility. I'm ready. If we get it on the poison stack Maybe on him. Working too hard. I I think I'm going to faint. Yeah, let's go oil mode here. Even if it gives Sid evasion. We see our push up here. I will release my power. Obey me. Obey me. Fight a little harder, Flurry. I'm a bit sleepy. You cannot sleep on me. Poison Dingo. This is my chance. The flames. Obey me. Almost died on Mercedes. Obey me. Listen to me sing. Let me help you. I hope this job is a little easier. I'm a bit sleepy. All right. But I can fight. Go for another poison here. Call. Mercedes. Preparation complete. I will shine. Together. Here I go. Goodbye. All right. And now we want to strip Dingo here. I'm ready. Hit him with a poison. Command me. Go for Cal here. Blaze. I'm scared. Go Need to heal up. Away. Magic for friends is nice. We'll take that. That's free damage on Dingo. I'll take care of I'm ready. Combo. Maybe I'm working too hard. Help you just all, all everybody in the dingo. And that should Mercedes. be the game. Preparation complete. Obey me. Obey me. You can't close your eyes. Yes. Fight a little harder, Flurry. And there you go. Abyss 103 in a nutshell. So this team has a significantly easier second floor. Like I already talked about, there are characters you could play like Red Tenebria, Spectre Tenebria, Pera, right? Red Charlotte. These are kinds of characters that will allow you to do a more conventional non curious team. But considering the number of five stars that you need, this is pretty much your best choice, your best team that you're going to be able to play as like a free to play player, completely budget, all three stars, four stars, connection heroes, right? So yeah, hopefully it was helpful to you. If you have any more questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you have other teams you want to suggest to your fellow players, leave those down there as well. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss 104. Later now.